An NBC News poll shows President Biden's approval rating has dropped to its lowest level since he took office nearly three years ago. Yeah, the results reveal that only 40% of voters approve of how the president is running the country, down 6% since January. The Democratic Party, meaning members of the Democratic establishment, are absolutely freaking out. They're panicking over Biden's low approval rating, how he's been performing in polling. As we have shared with you, the New York Times Siena College poll shows that Biden is trailing Donald Trump, the likely Republican nominee in key battleground states. And now we're also hearing that one of those Democrats, Democratic establishment, Democratic establishment strategist David Axelrod, is in a bit of a tiff with Biden. Biden has called him a prick over Axelrod basically raising the alarm over how Biden is performing in the poll. So we're gonna get to that in just a moment. But before we do, I think it's worth discussing recent reporting coming out of both Politico and the Washington Post, showing that the Biden campaign is in fact struggling on how to deal with voters concerns that Biden is simply too old to run for a second term. And what they did is they interviewed in Politico, more than a dozen Biden donors, fundraisers, Democratic establishment, party officials, and strategists as well. And I think it's important to know that these are the individuals that reporters are talking to. These are not Bernie bros, these are not you know leftists or progressives who have been sour on Biden from the beginning. These are people who have literally donated money to Biden's campaign, who have supported Biden, but are now kind of taking a step back, taking stock of the situation and realizing Look, poll after poll indicates that things are not looking good for Joe Biden. And the way he is messaging about his age is also not working out well. But what's really interesting is the disagreements within the Democratic establishment in regard to how Biden should message about his age. Now, as Politico reports, many donors are directly urging top campaign aides to go on offense, leaning even harder into Biden's age as proof of his wisdom in turbulent times. They're also pushing for more humor about Grandpa Joe. And apparently Joe Biden's camp has taken that advice because he's been engaging in more and more self deprecating humor, if you will, about his age. I don't know if that's really gonna carry him through and and help him beat Trump in the 2024 presidential election. But others fret that not enough has been done to place a similarly harsh spotlight on his political opponent's age. Now Biden's birthday is today, he just turned 81 years old. He is downplaying his birthday, there aren't really any public celebrations about it. And it's probably because he doesn't wanna draw attention to the fact that he's 81 years old and running for a second term. Trump himself is up there in age, he's 77 years old, but there is a noticeable difference in how they carry themselves, how they carry out their speeches. You look at Trump and yes, he definitely has moments where you're like, man, that guy's old, but he's still energetic relative to Biden. He seems more charismatic, he's not squinting into the camera as he's giving his speeches. So the idea that attacking Trump on his age is somehow going to work, I think is unfounded to say the least. Biden seems to get on a continuing basis knocked for his age while Trump does not, said Alan Kessler, a Democratic donor and Biden bundler. No one brings up the age thing with Trump, that double standard is troubling. And guess what, polling indicates that American voters for the most part aren't buying the argument that we should be as concerned about Donald Trump's age. This isn't me saying it, this is what the American voters are saying. So 70% of likely voters in six battleground states said Biden is too old to be an effective president, according to the New York Times Siena College poll released earlier this month. Only 39% of those battleground voters said Trump was too old. That's virtually unchanged from April when Reuters Ipsos poll found that 73% of adults believe that Biden is too old to be in office. And I want to provide some evidence. I want to provide an example for why this is the case. So we're gonna go to the next video. This is literally from today. And it gives you a sense of the mishaps that typically occur when Biden is out there in the public giving public speeches. There's an annual tradition having to do with Thanksgiving. The president pardons a turkey, so that is what this event is. And so with that context in mind, let's take a look at him kind of bumbling and fumbling through this lighthearted speech. 
Live pictures from the White House as the two turkeys appear to be a little bit reticent to get on the stage there. So but they will be pardoned, which is, uh, uh, let's listen in just, if we could, just for a few seconds. Honey crisp apples. Not bad, huh? Ice hockey. I sure and hell would like to see them play ice hockey. A thousand lakes and the mall in America. <laughs> now, just to get here, Liberty and Bell had to beat some tough odds in competition. They had to work hard to show patience and be willing to travel over a thousand miles. You could say even this harder than getting a, a ticket to the Renaissance tour or 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 Britney's tour. She's down in it's kind of warm in Brazil right now. What? <laughs> I don't. He was trying to make a joke about Britney Spears and Taylor Swift and something about Brazil. It made no sense. He obviously lost his train of thought. And if this was a one off, that would be one thing, okay? Sometimes when you're in the middle of saying something publicly, you're speaking off the cuff, you might lose your train of thought. It's happened to me. But this happens regularly with Joe Biden. There are videos of him looking confused on stage, not knowing where he's supposed to go. There are videos of him falling. He looks frail and I think it's undeniable that that is the case. And now that you're hearing more and more Democratic donors, more and more Democratic establishment figures speaking out about this tells you that this isn't just some you know, made up issue that the far left is concerned about. This is an issue that Democratic voters along with the Democratic establishment are concerned about. But there is also a deep seated denial within the Democratic National Committee in regard to the reality of this whole situation. As Politico reports, another Biden donor said they recently raised concerns about the president's age with DNC officials, but they just refused to even acknowledge it was a problem. Okay, so on one hand, I really want to reiterate and emphasize this point because it's important. Biden and the Democratic Party right now is hanging its hat on the idea that if they fear monger about Donald Trump enough, well, easy path to victory for Joe Biden. And so the, the messaging from the Democratic Party incessantly has been, Donald Trump poses a threat to our democracy. He poses a threat to our democratic process. He is a giant threat and we must, we absolutely must be concerned about that and fight back against that and elect a Democrat to ensure that Trump doesn't get a second term. That is the argument that they, that they make. And if they were sincere about that concern, they would want to run the best possible candidate to beat Donald Trump instead the Democratic establishment, the DNC is far more concerned about Joe Biden's narcissism, selfishness and ego. Joe Biden's desire to be a two term president. Joe Biden's desire to allegedly have a better legacy by being a two term president. Now, obviously that is not only incredibly selfish, but it risks Biden's legacy because there's a good chance that he might not get reelected. So he's willing to take that risk because to Joe Biden, serving a second term and having a better legacy, I guess, as a two term president is more important than, you know, risking a second Trump term. I, you, can't, you can't say two things at once. You can't on one hand say Trump is a threat. And then on the other hand say, no, but we insist that we're going to run the worst possible candidate to beat Donald Trump. And it's not based on nothing, it's based on polling, it's based on Biden's approval rating. And even David Axelrod has been speaking out against this, okay? So I wanna talk about that a little bit because apparently, according to recent reporting, after David Axelrod, longtime Democratic strategist who has defended Biden time and time again, after Axelrod floated the idea earlier this month that Democrats might need the president to consider whether he's the best nominee for the party next year. Biden was reportedly so angered that he referred to Axelrod as a prick. In fact, that topic even came up during a recent episode of Bill Maher's show where Maher declared that Biden cannot win. And then in a new New York Times column by Maureen Dowd, Dowd decides, no, this is unacceptable. I'm gonna go ahead and defend Axelrod 
especially given Axelrod's history of looking out for Joe Biden. She writes that David, David Axelrod is not a prick, uh, truly. I've known him since 2007, and if I had to pick a noun to describe him, it would be mensch. Now, I personally wouldn't go so far, but Dowd then goes on to provide examples of how Axelrod has been incredibly kind to Biden, incredibly supportive toward Biden. She mentioned that Axelrod, for instance, helped elevate him onto the ticket with Barack Obama back in 2008. And that Axelrod also says that Biden was a great vice president and has done a lot of wonderful things as president. She continues to write in this column, quote, when some in the Obama camp chattered in 2011 about switching Biden out for Hillary Clinton, Axelrod said, he protested, that would be an incredible act of disloyalty to a guy who has done a great job for us. So time and time again, Axelrod looking out for Biden, but the facts are the facts. He's now looking at the polling, he's looking at Biden's approval rating, and he's raising alarm over these issues. So what does Axelrod have to say about Biden calling him a prick? He said this, quote, I don't care about them thinking I'm a prick, that's fine. I hope they don't think the polls are wrong because they're not. And then get a load of this, Axelrod also says, I think he has a 50-50 shot here, but no better than that, maybe a little worse. He thinks he can cheat nature here and it's really risky. They've got a real problem if they're counting on Trump to win it for them. I remember Hillary doing that too making reference to the 2016 presidential election where, as we all know, Hillary Clinton got real cocky, thought she was gonna beat Trump handily and failed to do so. And that is exactly where Joe Biden currently is. The DNC is providing cover for his delusions. And he is essentially putting the future of the country at jeopardy because to him, the possibility of serving two terms is far more important, his ego is far more important than the future of this country. It is one of the most selfish acts I have seen in politics and that's saying something. Because our political system is littered with self-interested, selfish individuals. But again, if the core campaign message coming from the Biden camp is you must elect us, you must elect Joe Biden because Trump is a giant threat to the future of this country. They really have no leg to stand on when they know how Biden's performing in the polls and they know that there's a very good chance that Trump could in fact beat Biden. So we'll see how this plays out. Again, there are growing calls for Biden to reconsider, to essentially allow for a more robust Democratic primary. So far the DNC is in cahoots with Biden and they're refusing to do so. But I don't wanna hear a damn word from the Democratic establishment about how it's the progressives fault if Biden doesn't get reelected and if Trump gets to serve a second term. You have again, longtime Democratic strategists, fans of the Democratic establishment like David Axelrod, people like Bill Maher raising alarm with absolutely no legitimate response from the Biden camp. And I think it's incredibly pathetic to see this. So we'll fill you in as we learn more, but it's not looking good for Biden so far. And despite those growing calls for him to reconsider, doesn't seem like he's into that. Seems like he's a dead set to run for re-election. If you enjoyed this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.